Okay. Good afternoon, class. My name is Kenyatta Jackson. I want to welcome you to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school was a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof to you the existence of okay. Yahweh our Elohim. And the good afternoon, class. My Herbert name is Kenyatta Jackson. I'm going to welcome you to another lecture given by members of the Chicago this North School. This school was established as a result of a this divine is a school and not a church. And neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school was a non profit, non denominational religious and scientific institution. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you the school officials. The dean of the Northside Chicago branch is Dr. John Quaites. And the president is Dr. Patrick Ochoa. In this school, we use the true, correct, original names and titles of the Father, the Word or Son, and of the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the word Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by the word God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, and his name has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God, they are titles and they are not named. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many, but we know, we know now that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove to you that neither the Hebrew language, nor the Greek language, nor the Latin language has any letters or characters in their alphabet it will produce this sound that is made by the letter J. And neither was there a letter J in our English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source and substance, limits and bounds of everything. And we have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. And we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That means having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by a divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses the top of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of 
a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in this universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes this pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Northside Chicago Zoom class are as follows. First, is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. And second, is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law of the so-called law of nature and the power latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophies, modern, practical, and occult science. And fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. And six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. And seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. And eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saved in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. Today's scripture lesson is 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, which will be read by Dr. Rosa Taylor. And we will have our prayer this afternoon by Dr. Darren Taylor. May we please have our prayer. Let's all bow our hearts and minds. And uh, we thank Yahweh for getting us here again. Um, we want to uh, thank him for calling us, for choosing us, uh, and keeping us, you know, in his, uh, in his book, uh, for enlightening us, you know, taking away all that common nature thoughts and opinions he can we ask that he we know that he will keep cutting the way so in his uh, name we ask you know pray or sustain say hallelujah hallelujah thank you dr taylor Afternoon. I've been reading to you from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revised by Amy Trainer, the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Kenobi. This is 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as if we receive mercy, we faint not. And had renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of Yahweh deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of Elohim. But if our evangel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, 
in whom the spirit of this age have blinded the minds of them who believe not. Least the light of the glorious evangel of the Messiah, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but the Messiah, Yahshua the Savior, and ourselves your servants for Yahshua's sake. For Yahweh, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shine in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of Yahshua, that the life also of Yahshua might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahshua's sake, that the life also of Yahshua might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up Yahshua shall raise up us also by Yahshua and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the saints given of many redound to the glory of Yahweh. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That was Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. For the scripture lesson and thank you dr taylor again for the prayer just want to remind everyone please make sure your cell phones are silent so they won't disturb the speakers and we would like to acknowledge your visiting brethren wilmore gordon welcome we welcome you in advance please thank you what class are you from okay from fresno satellite we welcome you in advance and for this afternoon session, we would like to have uh, a testimony from our visiting brethren, Will Moore Gordon. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. First thing I like to do is ask me to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps maybe I should have something to say. Um, as I said, I came from the California ranch classes, so I've attended quite a few classes. Um, when I came to class, we first started talking about things that were just familiar to and things that were similar to the gospel. So one thing I learned was the word cloud, C L O U D. See Elohim or you die. It was just that simple. Um, those are the kind of things that I was taught. We were always taught to go back to the cloud 
and recognize Yahweh as he came out into the real estate, shape, and form. I'm kind of nervous, but uh, we won't let this be about me. I've gone to quite a few classes, went to the Tennessee Convention, and there was a little boy there. He looked at his watch and he said it was time to get busy. But I've noticed now that a lot of the church world up in their children on the floor and they're preaching. But what they're doing is only imitating what they see. I don't see any knowledge in them. I just see a parody of whether the preacher would or the type of mood. That's what the children were doing. So they still didn't get it. But I had to say that's not the case in our classes. Um, there was a two year old in my Sacramento class. And I was in the restroom and she asked me for antibacterial soap. A two year old. I said, What are they teaching our babies? <laughs> but I didn't even know a baby could say antibacterial. So, um, also, I noticed that we had another student, a kid, and he said he was born in class. And so, but he said, even though he was born in class, he didn't know a thing. And so, those are the type of things. One was talking about her. Uh, that when they were putting the blood on the door and the two sides were different from a basis, she was saying that all she was doing was imitating as well. She said she was grown before she realized exactly what was happening, what the blood had to be put on the side, on the top of the door and the two sides were different from a basin. So she was just pretty much parroting what the children were doing in the church world. But um, um like I said, my mind is really running here. Um, one question I had was, what did Jesus, or we know Yahshua, do that they killed him? And I listened to a lot of classes, and then they brought someone up to say, he raised Lazarus from the dead. As long as he was healing the blind, raising sick, taking care of people, it was okay. But when he raised Lazarus from the dead, then they say he's doing too much. Now he got to go. So with those few words, i like to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'll take Thank you, Mrs. Gordon, for the beautiful testimony. Our second speaker for this afternoon will be Dr. Casey Jones. Dr. Jones. Good morning, Paris. Good morning. Good afternoon. I am uh, grateful and thankful to be here this morning. It's only uh, by grace and mercy that uh, I myself come to know anything uh, of Yahweh, of Joshua and Messiah, and this great gospel that was given to the Dr. Kim and um, admonished us to investigate, see if these things are true, and also. Appreciate the uh, wonderful testimony from our brother. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we can have uh, First Corinthians fifteen and one through four read. Uh, 
you know, with the it, it just is a wonderful thing to have uh, any knowledge of Yahshua the Messiah and to have his spirit in which he died on the cross, you know, to usher us in and to give him parts of his spirit. Um, and as the first speaker said, we are admonished to go to the cloud to gather the spirit. Spirit, you can't physically see with your physical eye. It's the source and substance. It's the source and substance from which everything is formed and comes forth is from spirit. And Yahweh is depicted in this chart as a cloud. Not that he is, but that's what he chose, a cloud, because it has no particular or descriptive shape and form. And then this pure spirit form, uh, pure spirit form, he is intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And it was these nine divine attributes that took shape and form as Elohim, which this is the word for son. And this vision we showed to Moses in top of Mount Sinai. Maybe we can have uh, Exodus 24, 9 and 10. But before that, it was a promise made to Abraham. Um, Abraham was told to get away from his father's and mother's house and his kindred's house in, into a land that Yahweh was showing. Maybe we could have a, a, a I don't know what to call it, different things, but Genesis uh, 17. Well, actually, do Genesis. Uh, 12, 1 through 3, and you might want to do uh, 17 and 1 through 5 or 6 or 7. And this, Abraham was called out um, from his father's house. And maybe we can have those. 1 Corinthians? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the, the glad tidings which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I have delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay, thank you. And that's the one person, and that's Yahshua, and his death, death, burial, and resurrection on the third day according to the scriptures. Not as the world tries to preach today about different gospels or move from this person and that person. It's only one, and that's Yahshua the Messiah. It's after his death, burial, and resurrection according to the scripture. Now, I was talking about this uh, promise made to Abraham uh, in the land of Canaan. And see, Abraham's family, his father made idols, like wooden idols that people pray to. He, he was like a salesman of those. So, Yahweh told him to get away from his family's household into a land that he would show him, and he would make a great nation out of Abraham. Uh, can, can we have that? Uh, Genesis 15. Okay, did you want 12? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma this is Genesis 12 and 1. And Yahweh has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. 
and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in these shall all families of the earth be blessed. And then we'll go over to Genesis 15. Oh, my one. Seven. 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 Yeah, seven. Okay. Let's get Genesis 7, 3, and 1. And, Abram, and when Abram was 90 years, 90 years old and nine, Yahweh appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty Elohim. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Where you? Yes, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and Yahweh talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Okay. So then, Continue. Did you get to the seventh yet? Not yet. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make the nations, and I will make nations out of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be an Elohim unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Okay, thank you for that. And that's the covenant he made. He said he would bless all families of the earth. And his seed, now Abraham begat Isaac. To be an Elohim unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So Abraham begat Isaac, which Isaac was a type of Yahshua the Messiah because he was a promise seed. And Abraham's wife was elderly at that time and laughed within herself. When the angel told her that he would have the seed. And <coughs> Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob. And, and due to three families up here in the land of Canaan, Joseph, their brother, was a forerunner down here in Egypt and had gained command with, uh, was raised up and had a high authority with one of the pharaohs down here in Egypt. And he had store, store houses with corn. So the children of Israel, now Jake, it was Jacob's posterity that went down into Egypt due to this famine down here. And it was his posterity that went down here. Now, by and by, they, they get food and, and they had it good for a second because Joseph was a put a second in command to the Pharaoh at that time. But it was a Pharaoh that rose up, Ramsey, uh, Ramses of the 18th dynasty, which was 666. Um, he put heavy bondage and put the children of Israel in heavy bondage. And, you know, uh, Moses was reared up at this time during, during a death decree. And Pharaoh, who took Pharaoh, um, put heavy bondage on, on the people and put burdensome work. And he, he issued a death decree to kill all of the male children of the Hebrews down here. He feared that if, see, the Hebrews, they were multiplying. If they were multiplying fast. And that Pharaoh feared that if they multiplied enough, they would outnumber the Egyptians and overtake them. So he, he issued a death decree to kill all of the male Hebrew children. And Moses is born up, born under this death decree. 
Uh, now, this also testifies to Yahshua the Messiah because when Yahshua is born on the scene, King Herod was seeking his life to murder him when Yahshua the Messiah was born. But back to Moses. Moses is born under a, a death decree. Um, his mother hid him for some three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she made an art of bulrushes and, and, and placed him in the flags by the river Nile. And this is typifying the death, a burial, and the resurrection. Because the art that was pitched with slime was likened unto a death because she put her child in. Now, Pharaoh's sister used to come down here to the Red Sea or the River Nile to bathe herself. And her maidens heard Moses crying out. Moses was crying, so she went and retrieved him and had compassion on him, which is also typifying a death, a burial, and a resurrection. Mm -hmm. So Moses is reared up here in Pharaoh's house. And can we have that in Exodus and probably just a little bit of it? Uh, this is Exodus 2, 1 through 8. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, and the handmaid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said, Take unto her, take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Now, Moses is reared up in Egypt, in Pharaoh's house. He becomes accustomed with the Egyptian gods, the deities, the customs, the traditions. So at the age of 40 years old, Moses comes out and he sees an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew. He enters, intervenes as a peacemaker, which testifies really to Yahshua the Messiah, who is the comfort. And he intercedes, he kills the Egyptian, and he buries him in the sand. The next day he comes out, he sees two Hebrews striving amongst themselves, and he intercedes in a look at him like, who made you a judge over us? Do you intend to kill us as you did the Egyptian? So Moses knows that this thing is known what, what he did. He flees into the wilderness, the land of Midian, um, and he's out here for some 40 years, okay? And he becomes a shepherd. Uh, he marries one of the daughters of Jethro Well. And it's out here at this burning bush where Moses gets an introduction to Yahweh. See, uh, maybe we can have uh, Exodus, the uh, third chapter. Exodus, start at one or go to the burning. Well, I mean, wherever you're. Okay, uh, Exodus th 3 and 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and, he be and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called, uh, called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put, on, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Okay, and... and 
when Moses be, beholding a bed and he's told to take off his shoes and what's on the bottom of your feet is your soul. Mm -hmm. And all souls are there before Yahweh, Elohim. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, and it's also in this location, this is the holy place. The wilderness of Sinai, where he's at. And in this migratory pattern, it is located in the most hope, it's located in the holy place, which is the wilderness of Sinai. Um, and it's also the location where eventually this tabernacle pattern will be built. But Moses is told to go back down into Egypt to free the children of Israel that were under heavy laden bondage to that Pharaoh at that time. So Moses' commission, I think I'm moving ahead of head though. Maybe you can get a little bit towards uh, like 315 so he can, he tells Moses who he is, the Elohim of uh, your father, you understand? Right. We'll start at uh, third, uh, Exodus three thirteen. And Moses said unto unto Elohim, Behold, when I go, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, the 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 uh, Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And 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 Elohim said unto Moses, I will be. I will be that I will to be. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I, I will be have sent me unto you. And Elam said more unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. That's right. Now, he said, this is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. And see, that doesn't mean you can come about and change it because you think something sounds better. You understand? Right. So Moses asked an intelligent question because he knows that there's many guys down here in Egypt. They worship everything. They had a sun guy. You know, they had a, a guy for uh, uh, for, for the uh, fruits and 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 they they worship everything down there in Egypt at that time. You know, it was many gods. So Moses asked the intelligent question. You know, you know, what's your name? And Yahweh told him, and he said. I'm the Elohim of your father. You understand? And this is my name forever and memorial unto all generations. Moses did not want to go back down into Egypt. He feared the Pharaoh down here would surely kill him if he found out what was what he did. So Moses put up a lot of excuses. And um, you know, Yahweh told him, your brother Aaron. We'll meet you along the way. Maybe we can find that one. See. But it's all according to Yahweh's purpose. You understand? Him coming out of Egypt was typifying the death, a burial, and a resurrection. So maybe we can find where. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, we got uh, Exodus uh, 5. And 27. And Yahweh said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and he met him in the mount of Elohim and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of Yahweh who had sent him and all the signs which he had commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. That's right. Now, this is typifying the law and the prophets. Aaron or Moses represents the lawgiver, and Aaron represents the prophet. 
because he was his spokesman. So he goes down into Egypt and delivers the name of Yahweh Elohim to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, who is this Yahweh? I won't, you know, I won't let them go. And, and that's also typifying the beast man, Satan, Lucifer, because he has no ears. He's not trying to listen to anything about Yahweh. You understand? So, but Yahweh told Moses, he, he showed, he gave him some signs. Um, and he told him when he went down there, can we find that where he said, I will be with you? Because he had to, it's the four, Exodus, the fourth chapter, he had to perform some miracles to let Moses know that I'm with you and you will you have power. No worries. Uh, I believe this might be a little bit of uh, beginning at the fourth chapter of Exodus. Okay. Getting that. Okay. This is Exodus 4. I'll start at, at 9. And it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shouldst take the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou taketh out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Now Moses said unto Yahweh, my Elohim, I am not eloquent, neither there heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And Yahweh said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? And who maketh the dumb or deaf? or the seeing, or the blind, have not I, Yahweh? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and I will teach thee what thou shalt say. Also Exodus 3, 12, or 3 and 11, we start. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the children, brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. Okay, thank you for that. Now, at this time, things are turning up down here in Egypt. Yahweh poured out 10 devastating plagues on the gods of Egypt. Now, you know, everything that they worship, he plagued. You understand? He turned the water into blood. They were in a bad shit. This whole Egypt was devastated. Uh, and on the ninth plague, it was stingent black darkness. Uh, and on the tenth plague, it was the death of the firstborn male and beast, or beast man. So it's the death of the firstborn of beast and man. So Yahweh Elohim, working through Moses, they issued the Passover. Uh, now, and as you can see, well, Exodus the twelfth chapter, because there, there's a there was a, a prescribed way for the children of Israel to come out of Egypt. Egypt typifies the world which we live in today, where they worship many deities, you understand? And Egypt is also, is painted black down here because it's mis it represents misery or confusion and darkness and ignorance. This is what Egypt represents. And it also represents this outer court here on this tabernacle pattern. Uh, can we have that? Uh, Exodus, Exodus 12, chapter. Yes, Exodus 12, start 12 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay, and then, see, that's a knowledge in itself because, you know, we have the great glory in calendar, and usually first month is January, but Yahweh is telling him, 
This is gonna be the first month to you. Continue. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorposts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in the night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Thank you. Um, and this lamb testified to Yahshua the Messiah. See, he was the first to resurrect from the dead. Now, it couldn't have any spots of blemish on that lamb. It had to be perfect. You understand? And that, that's testifying to Yahshua the Messiah because they took him be, before Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate <laughs> said, I, I can find no guile. I find no fault with this man. Mm -hmm. um, and Yahshua the Messiah, you see, it had, that had to, the, the lamb had to be roasted and completely consumed and that lamb had to also be in them you know they had to eat that lamb and consume that lamb and that lamb had to be burnt up it also testifies to Yahshua the Messiah see when he was crucified and buried and resurrected he resurrected a quickening spirit you understand so it was no more flesh so if that lamb was testifying to him and also when he comes on the scene, they put a crown of thorns on his head and nails in his hands and nails in his feet, making a four point configuration on the cross. You understand? So that lamb is testifying to Yahshua the Messiah. See, the lamb of Yahweh. Maybe we could have uh, John 129 read. Uh, but see, this was a prescribed meal to come out of Egypt, to come out of Mizoram and darkness. So the children of Israel, they, they consumed the lamb and they followed this phenomenal cloud. They had an angel in its cloud. And maybe also, I know I apologize if I'm jumping around, but um, you know, children of Israel were still afraid of Pharaoh. And they come to this Red Sea, they, they had mountains on each side of them and didn't see a way out, a way of escape out of this, this situation. Uh, and maybe we can have the 14th chapter, uh, Exodus, where Moses tells the people to stand still. Uh, because that's a hard thing to do, to stand still when you got, look like you're in a bad situation and you don't see no way out, you know? This is Exodus 14 and 14, 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Yahweh shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. That's right. And maybe, maybe you might be able to find it a little bit later in that same chapter where that cloud turned into darkness to the Egyptians, but it was light to the children of Israel. Okay, this is uh, 14 and 21. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. 
And he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor of the pillar of fire by night, from before the people. And I think you want it uh, was darkness unto. Okay. All right. So 14 and 19. And the angel of Yah and the angel of Yahweh went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of a cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud of darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that they so that the one came not near the other all night. Right. And that's that's just a beautiful thing. Um, and Yahweh did this by principles of a death, a burial, and a resurrection, because it was the blood of the lamb that they had to put on the four corners of the door of their household. And Yahshua, when he comes on the scene, he says, I am the door. You understand? Uh, and also, they came through the uh, miraculous waters of the Red Sea, and they came through on dry ground following the cloud. So that's death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension. And, and they spent some 40 years out here in the wilderness of Sinai. You understand? So this, this lamb, well, first of all, before that, it was 600 Egyptians. It was 600 chariots and 600 horses that was uh, pursuing after the children of Israel that died here in the Red Sea. They got drowned out or cast down. And that's typifying Yahweh casting down Satan. You understand? Because Yahshua is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Um, see, yeah, well, they spend, they get out here in the wilderness of Sinai and spend some 40 years. Uh, Moses is called up here into the mount. And maybe we can have, uh, he makes three trips up here on, I believe his second trip, he comes up here. The children of Israel, they, de they delayed their coming because this, this cloud right here was uh, a burning, uh, fiery cloud on the top of Mount Sinai. And they were scared. They were scared for their lives. So they like Moses. You, you talk to him. Maybe we can find that part. But Moses is called up here into the mount. Um, Exodus 24, 9 and 10. And probably a good one. And then also uh, Exodus uh, 25, 8 and 9 and 40. But Moses is called up here. He sees the days of creation. He sees Elohim, the archetype, original pattern, transform himself into a fully furnished, threefold tabernacle pattern and into the days of creation, pattern after this tabernacle up here. He spent 33 days going over the inner working of this tabernacle pattern to Moses. So it was vitally important that he retain this tabernacle pattern and then he built it. Uh, but Exodus 24, 8, 9. And Moses took to, Exodus 24, 9, 10. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel that was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hands. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Right. Um, and they seen uh, this Elohistic figure with hands and feet. That's what they seen, but he didn't lay 
his hand on him, or me coming around in this school, he didn't give them any understanding of what they saw. Uh, now Moses is called up here. He's in in the very top of the mountain, which is typifying that most holy place, actually, in the tabernacle pattern. And children of Israel, they see a burning cloud and they think Moses is dead. This cloud is burning. So they, I think it was their imagination and with their physical eye, and they built the golden calf, which was a grave error on their part because. Yahweh Elohim told them not to have any graven images before him. This idol, this was an idol, a golden idol, and they made it out of gold and they bowed down and worship. Moses is told to come back out. And we find that where Moses is told to come back out uh, for your people have corrupted themselves because they were partying down here, you know? So they built the golden calf according to their own vain imagination, and they celebrating and playing music and turning up. So maybe we can find that. This is Exodus uh, 32 and 32 and uh, 7. Okay, thank you. And Yahweh said unto Moses, go, Get thee down, for thy people, which thou hast brought it out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped them, and have sacrificed thereon, and said, This be thy gods of Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Continue. That was a grave error. You know, okay. I mean, and maybe you can find a little bit of it. You want to drop down a little? Yeah. Yes. 17 verse. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, he said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that do sing, that sing, do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' wet anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. Okay, and now this is typifying that first covenant being broken. You understand that first covenant is only in meats and drinks and cardinal ordinances and physical ways of worship. And it's a new covenant that's going to be made. So can we have uh, Exodus, the 34th chapter? This uh, table of stones that he broke. Now these had the laws of Yahweh Elohim. He wrote on, you know, on these tables of stones. And this is, this, can we have Exodus 34 to check? Okay, this is Exodus 30, 34 and 1. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Hew thee out, hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first table which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai. And present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flock nor herds nor feed before their mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up to unto the Mount Sinai. And as Yahweh had commanded him, and he took in his hand the two tables of stone. Okay, now this second table of stone is typifying Moses bringing up his own heart. And Yahweh Elohim writing on that. That second covenant 
is also typified with Yahshua writing in a man's heart and mind. This is what that second table of stones represented, that new covenant where Yahweh Elohim is writing in the man's heart and mind. Uh, see, Moses, uh, he didn't know that at that time, but he broke that first table of stones. And the second table of stones is placed here in the Ark of the Covenant. And we have Exodus the 25, 89, and 40th verse because you know, Yahweh Elohim is setting up a way that he wants to be worshipped. He's he told Moses to build this tabernacle uh, as a dwelling, dwelling place, and we could also have Leviticus 16 and 2 also. Exodus 25 and 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Uh, 40th verse. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. That's right, you know. And this pattern had uh, seven steps. Um, the first step was the gate. The second step was the altar of sin sacrifice, where four points of blood was put. And uh, an animal, innocent animal had to be sacrificed when the children of Israel committed a sin, they had to bring a sacrifice, and that sacrifice was killed, and the blood was put on four points of, the, of this altar, and it also represents Yahshua the Messiah, who had four uh, points of blood on him, a crown of thorns on his head, and nails in his hands and feet, uh, making that four-point configuration, and it also uh, you know, Yahweh is a consuming fire, and just like uh, this, this altar of sin sacrifice represents the earth flame. All right. <laughs> uh, well, you know, my time is coming to a close, I know. but uh, and it was just a wonderful thing. This altar of sin sacrifice, second step, third step is the brazen labor, twofold function is a uh, 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 cleansing and uh, uh, it's a burial and a uh, washing and regeneration principle because the high priest would bury the sacrifices here in this labor and, and then drain the bloody water out and put fresh water in and then he would clean himself. He had to be anointed, he had to be anointed from head to toe with this uh, holy cup of anointed oil after he washed himself. He had to do this before he could officiate in the holy place. So this is typifying a, a death, burial, and a resurrection because this oil represents spirit. So the fourth step is the door. And before, the high priest had to be anointed with this oil before he can officiate in this holy place. The fifth step is the holy place. We had seven branch golden candlestick that golden candlestick that gave light continuously in this tabernacle so it was never in darkness. You had 12 loaves of shoe bread, um, which the high priest ate off daily for sustenance. And this also testifies to Yahshua the Messiah when, when the children of Israel were out here in Mount Sinai, they had light by day and they had light also at night. And it was never darkness out here and Yahweh rained manna down here in the, in the wilderness of Sinai when they complained about food. Now, Moses is a type. He's playing a type of an intercessor, and they had this altar of incense right here in this holy place, which only the high priest knew the ingredients thereof to make it. The sixth step is the second veil, or what we call the veil of the flesh, and it also testifies to Yahshua the Messiah because he took off his flesh and he ascended into heaven. And the seventh step is the most holy place. It has a three and one configuration with these two archangels <clears throat> over, uh, overshadowing this mercy seat. In the mercy seat, you had a law in there. You had Aaron's rod that butted, and it was an invisible eye here. This is representing uh, the invisible presence. So Yahweh Elohim, see, 
that we did Leviticus 16 and 2, but the all of the vessels that were in the most holy place and holy place were highly, this is golden vessels here. And in the outer court is highly polished brass. You understand? So, but more importantly, this testifies to Yahshua the Messiah. Um, and maybe we can have First John 5 and 7 read. Okay. While we're getting at Leviticus 16 and 2, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, <clears throat> speak unto Aaron, and Yahweh said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Right. That was where he would appear. Now, you got to look at your physical body. You got a head cavity, a chest cavity, and a abdominal cavity. And it's a, a beautiful thing. And you see how you, you have a seven branch or aorta, which pumps seven, it's, it's seven, uh, it go, it, seven vessels from the heart. And you got, um, you got your heart got four chambers on it, just like this uh, table of shoe bread have four corners on it. And your blood, you, you pump 12 pints of blood in your body, and they ate 12 loaves of shoe bread off of this uh, table of shoe bread here in the tabernacle. The altar incense, that's like an unto your lung. You know, uh, for a fresh breath of air, that's, that's, that's wonderful for the brain, you know, a, a fresh breath of air. And it's, it's just like this altar of incense right here in this holy place because this was a, a sweet smelling savior unto the nostrils of Yahweh Elohim, see, from these sacrifices that were killed here in the altar. And you're also head cavity, chest cavity, abdominal cavity, and your body, soul, and spirit and you got these bones holding up this flesh, right? These bones represent the soul. So when your flesh is shredded away and done away with, the bones stay long after, like they still, you know, analyze in the museum, things like that. So, and maybe we can have Romans 119 and 14. Uh, but, it all testifies to Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, you know, he's a, a wonderful element. You know, he, he's, he was almighty provider during uh, Abraham's time, and he's still the almighty provider. He's there. So if uh, anybody got anything out of what I said, all honor and praise goes to Yahweh Elohim to his son, Yahshua the Messiah. I'm going to use this word. Thank you, Dr. Casey Jones. Our second speaker for this afternoon's session will be Dr. Gabriel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And um, you know, very you know, comforting words to always reflect back at what occurred and to look back at the principles executed. Um, what happened to the children of Israel, uh, showing that the burial section, um, you know, which testifies also to a soul being led out of a darkened state and the soul, you know, of course, can be redeemed, made alive again in Joshua. 
because all these things go back and testify to God inside and what he is continually um, um, doing for the soul. Um, and those things, like I said, are you know, great to hear. And I also always ask him to keep that in my heart and mind, um, you know, just in my daily life, to always look for the death, the burial, and the resurrection in my own life. Um, so, you know, with these few words, it's just like, Thank you, Dr. Mays, for that testimony. Our second speaker, our uh, next speaker, uh, we would like to call Dr. May Cohen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Dr. May Cohen. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, class. Um, I am so thankful to get another opportunity to come to one of these classes and learn about our Creator, Yahweh, our Elohim, as He really is and actually exists through His Son, Yahshua the Messiah. The first aim of our school says to help you find and know. Not just fine, but no, if you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. The previous speaker, uh, before he took his seat, he was about to get uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20. And he did a beautiful job of showing you how he talked about this tabernacle pattern. So let's get Romans 1, 19 and 20. He talked about this tabernacle pattern, and he gave some examples of uh, our physical body, how it's set up according to this tabernacle pattern. And we come in this school and we find out that this tabernacle pattern is a direct reflex of the true pattern, which is Yahweh Elohim himself. It says up here, Elohim, the archetype or the original pattern of the universe, which this physical tabernacle pattern that was given to Moses, thinking his second trip, three trips in the mount on his second trip, this is who is that, right? His second trip in the mount, you know, he was given explicit details of this tabernacle pattern and the building. You know, in this tabernacle pattern, we're able to understand in explicit detail our creator, how he operates, how he's uh, set up, is three compartments in this tabernacle, but it's one tabernacle. And the previous speaker, the previous speaker talked about all of these things are leading us up to Yahshua the Messiah. This tabernacle pattern, the court roundabout is likened unto Yahshua the Messiah in the likeness of sinful flesh. The holy place is likened unto Yahweh Elohim, shape and form that Yahweh took on in part to create both the physical and angelic creation. And then this uh, most holy place is pointing up to uh, the unity of the spirit. These three are one. Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. Let's get First John 5 and 7. But before we get that, get Romans 1, 19 and 20. Romans That's where the previous speaker left off with that. Go ahead. Romans 1, 19 and 20. Mm -hmm. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. Okay, is now. And I, and I know I've said this many times, but I just can't get over it because I came up in the Baptist church and they told me time and time again, especially when I was a little girl and had questions about my creator. They said, well, your creator is past finding out. God is past finding out. 
and you don't question God. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think that was fair. Now, the scriptures that we're reading here, Romans 1, 19 and 20, if you read it in your King James Version, it says, that which may be known to God. I got to change my glasses because I got my reading glasses on. I can't see a thing. So I'm going to have to put my glass, uh, other glasses on so I can see. Okay. Go ahead and continue to read. Because that which may be known of Yahweh mm -hmm. is manifest in them. Now it says, that which may be known of Yahweh, on your King James Version, it says, that which may be known of God. So we, we can know something about God. My minister told me you can't know nothing about God. But the Bible says that which may be known of God. So there is something that we can know about God. Go ahead and continue to read. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. See, Yahweh is the one that's got to show it. Okay, we can't show each other. It says Yahweh is the one that showed it unto them. Continue. For the invisible things of him mm -hmm. from the creation of the world. See, the invisible things of him often bring from the creation of the world. Go are, ahead. are clearly seen. See, now it says here that invisible things are clearly seen. Now, just from a natural standpoint, that sounds crazy. Well, what you mean? You can see invisible things clearly. What the heck does that mean? You see what I'm saying? I mean, if you just take that literally, you know, seeing invisible things clearly, what well, about that is invisible? We know from a natural standpoint, we can't see invisible things. But here in your Bible, it says that the invisible things can be seen clearly, but there's a certain way. Go ahead and continue to read. Being understood mm -hmm. by the things that are made. See, now it says these invisible things that are invisible, we can see clearly, but it's by the things that are made. And as the first speaker went into this tabernacle pattern, see, this tabernacle pattern was um, set in the midst of the children of Israel. And they was out here in the land of Egypt for 40 years. It was 12 tribes that camped around. There was three tribes on each side. See, 12 tribes in all. And this tabernacle pattern was in the midst. Go ahead. Even his eternal power. See, we can understand. See, looking at taking these uh, natural things, looking at uh, understanding, uh, taking the natural to understand the spiritual, we can understand our creator, the creator of heaven and earth, that which may be known of God, or that which may be known of Yahweh. We can take all this and we can understand his eternal power. And supernal nature, go ahead and read. And supernal nature, so that so they are with you. And his eternal power and the supernal nature. He, uh, and Yahweh in this statement says it all the time in the uh, moderation that he's the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. Everything made and everything known and unknown. See, both angelic and physical. He's a source, substance, Limits and bounds of all that. See, we can understand his eternal power, supernal nature. And then uh, he took on, in part, shape and form as Yahweh Elohim. And in this state, he is the archetype of the original pattern of the universe. See, it didn't take all of Yahweh in his pure spirit state to take on the shape and form. He take on shape and form in part. And then at the appointed time, he came and became the likeness of sinful flesh. A salvation for mankind as Joshua the Messiah, which means Yahweh is salvation. So, see, we can look at the natural things to understand spiritual things, even his eternal power and his supernal nature. Go ahead and read. So that they are without excuse. Excuse, without excuse. Everything that we see here. See, all of these biblical stories on these charts, right here it says, chart on pattern. Or a plan of salvation, see? So all of these different Bible stories, I know when I first came in the class, and I said, why not? They got the Bible stories, because I read the Bible a little bit. You see what I'm saying? I, I came up in the Baptist church, and I was committed to, you know, trying to learn or find out about God, but I didn't know how to learn about him. I didn't know how to find out about him. But I did read a, read a couple of them Bible stories in my search of trying to find and learn about God. And then when I came up in the class, I said, why not? They got the Bible stories on these charts. I said, it must be something to this. You see what I'm saying? They got the Bible stories on here. But we find out coming up in here, it's just not about the Bible stories. See, it's about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Yahshua Messiah according to the scriptures. Get Isaiah 8 20. According to the scriptures. Or we have that blame. Water and spirit principle. Now we can really read about this in First John five and seven. That's it there, right? 
and Romans 1, 19 and 20. That's yes. it? Yes. Okay, so let's go and read 1 John 5 and 7. And let's get, um, before you get Isaiah and 20, read 1 John 5 and 7, but I also want you to get 1 Corinthians, uh, the 15th chapter, start at 1. But read um, 1 John 5 and 7 right now. This is 1 John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Okay, now we just talked about his supernal uh, nature and eternal power. Now here is important what we just said. It said that there are three that bear record in heaven. And we have a pictorial illustration on these charts, see, to be able to understand that, to be able to glean an idea of what that means. So it says that there are three that bear record in heaven. And we know, according to this tabernacle pattern, this is a type of heaven. So you see this three in one configuration here? See, this is the type of heaven, the most holy place. So now it says that there are three that bear record in heaven. Continue to read. The Father. See, the Father. We come up in here and know what that means. See, the Father, Yahweh, who's pure spirit state. Continue. The Word. The Word, which is Yahweh and Him, taking on children from Empire. Continue. And the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, which is Yahshua the Messiah, which means Yahweh is salvation. There are three to bear with them in heaven. Continue. And these three are one. Okay. Now these three are one. That record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. Continue to read. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Now this record in heaven is the witness on earth. Go ahead. The spirit. Okay, so now, when we look at this quote, we're going to be speaking to you. This is like a chapter. So the spirit, we have that cup of holy, uh, cup of holy, cup of anointing oil. Okay? And that cup of anointing oil, before the priest could officiate in this tabernacle, he had to be completely covered with this anointing oil. And we know, according to this teaching, that this is a part, this is a uh, Pointing up the spirit. So that record in heaven, we're reading about that witness in the earth. See, this pattern goes right along with that. So the spirit, read. And the water. And the water, the brazen and labor. Remember, those sacrifices had to be watching into the twofold function because the high priest walked in this too, which was a life unto regeneration. And also, he had to watch those uh, sacrifices daily. So we got the spirit and the water. And the blood. And the blood. We know that they had to offer sacrifices daily. You know, just like what I think it was a third class. Depending on what you brought to the altar, everybody knew what sin you committed. You see what I'm saying? So it says the spirit, the water, and the blood. And see, if you notice, this uh, a sin of sacrifice has four points on it. Four points of blood. Well, when it has got four points of blood on it. See, the previous speaker was talking about how Yahshua was silent. See, he had the door. You see what I'm saying? Remember, he had the four points of blood, one, two, three, four. And see, when we look at these four points of blood here, see, it's picking up all mankind. It's picking up the Caucasian man. It's picking up the black man. It's picking up the Asian man. It's picking up the Indian man. You see what I'm saying? It's picking up all mankind. See, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And over here is uh, a perfect example of it here um, where it has that spirit, and that water and that blood, see, go ahead, which is really pointing up to uh, death, blood is pointing up to death, water is pointing up to burial, and spirit is pointing up to resurrection. They go right hand in hand. The spirit, the water, and the blood continue. And these three agree in one. See, now these three agree in one. These three that reckon in heaven is one, see, but that uh, witness on the earth, the spirit, water, and blood. They agree in one. Okay, go ahead. If we receive the witness of men. And I know I've said this so many times. But we receive the witness of men all the time. We get on a plane. We expect that plane to take us where we want to go. It ain't going to crash. We go to the store to buy food. We expect ain't none of that food going to be poison. It's good for us to consume. You see what I'm saying? We receive the witness of men all the time. Read. The witness of Yahweh is good. The witness of Yahweh, which is the blood, the water, the spirit, the death, burial, and resurrection. This record in heaven. See, they have a witness on the earth. See, this witness is greater. Why? Can you continue to read? For this is the witness of Yahweh. See, because this is the witness of Yahweh. And also, this witness of the blood, water, spirit, the death, 
burial, resurrection. It's leading us up to something. What is this leading us up to? It's leading us up to eternal life. Okay, get John uh, 17 and 1. Okay, but uh, is, that, is that it there? Uh, this, okay. which he had testified, he, of, his he had testified of his son. See, we have to Yahshua the Messiah. See, the whole thing is about Yahshua the Messiah, which means that I have to say it over and over again because we have to realize what we're dealing with here, which means Yahweh is salvation. Okay, Yahweh is salvation. Okay, uh, I know I got some other uh scripture, but since we just read that, get for me. Uh, John 17 and 1, then we'll get those other ones. John 17 and 1. Mm -hmm. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Okay, now this is when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, okay? And it said, this is Yahshua, because we know he's the intercessor. It says this, when an, one intercessor between Yahweh and man, and that is the man, Yahshua the Messiah. So he said that he, read that, uh, start that over uh, again, Dr. Taylor. Yes, these words spake Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And lifted up his eyes to heaven. Okay, now he says he's lifted up his eyes to heaven. And we thinking when he lifted up his eyes to heaven, we thinking, oh, the atmosphere, the stratosphere, the ionosphere. You see what I'm saying? That's what a kind of man thinks. That's why they point up there. They say, God don't like the ugly. You know, when you talk to kind of man, people don't always point up, ain't they? They always point up because they think it's geographical. Right, right. But it's not geographical. Yeah, right. See, Yahshua. Is Yahweh is salvation? He's in the sonship degree here. So we know according to the tabernacle, it's abstract, intermediate, and concrete. Okay, so he was in a lower state here, see. So when it says lifting up his eyes to heaven, he's dealing with that higher state. You see what I'm saying? So go ahead and continue to read. And said, Father, the hour is come. Mm -hmm. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Yes. And how is he going to glorify thee? By putting his spirit in the heart and in the mind of mankind. That's how Yahweh is going to be glorified through the Son. Ah, oh, man, baby, baby, back. This thing is something else, ain't it? I'm telling you. Man, I'm telling you, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Okay, continue to read. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. See, you know, Yahshua the Messiah, which means Yahweh the salvation. See, he's given him power over all flesh. Read. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, see, now you got to look at that. He said, he's given eternal life to as many as thou, the Father Yahweh, has given him. See, this thing was preordained all the way from before the foundation of the world. You got to understand that. Yahweh, God, Yahshua said, thine they were, and you gave them me. Woo, baby, baby, bye. But go ahead and continue to read. And this is life eternal. Okay, now we read what life eternal is. He said, now, and this is Yahshua the Messiah talking. It'll be read if you have a red edition of your Bible. You see, and this is the creator of heaven and earth in the sonship degree talking, getting ready to give you a definition of what eternal life is. He said, now, this is life eternal. Read. That they might know that. See, that they might know that. Thou only. Thou only, Yahweh. Thou only. Remember we talked about that. Uh, record in heaven, these three are one. Thou only, Yahweh. Read. Art the true El. You're the true El of him. And Yahshua the Messiah. Yahshua the Messiah. Whom thou hast sent. Whom thou hast sent. See, that three in one configuration. We can look at that tabernacle pattern. Looking at that three in one configuration up here. And the type of shadow to understand according to Romans 1 19 and 20. Okay, all right. That's it there. I know I had Isaiah 8 20. What was the other one I had? First Corinthians 15. Get first Corinthians first, and then give me Isaiah 8 20. First Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you. And this is Paul talking, right? Yes. Now he said he declared the gospel. Now we just read about the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood, water, spirit uh, principle. So now this is going to go right along with it. See, the story don't change. It's the same. Yahweh say, I change not. Okay? So continue to read. Which I preach unto you, mm -hmm. which also you have received. See, he said, now I preached it unto you, and you received it. Read. And wherein we stand. And you can stand in it. Read. 
by which also ye are saved. Now this gospel, see, you're saved by this gospel. Read. If you keep in memory mm -hmm. what I preached unto you. And see, he's got to do that, because remember, and I think it's John 14, 26, the comforter will bring all things back to your remembrance. See, the Holy Spirit in you is the one that brings these things back to your remembrance. See, that's who we have to depend on. See, that's what we have to look to. We can't look to each other for the answers. We can't look to each other for help. We have to look to Yahshua Messiah, see, for our help. Okay, continue to read. Unless ye have believed in vain. See, unless it just had no merit. See, you didn't, it didn't do nothing for you. Go ahead, but if the Holy Spirit is taking up residence in your heart and mind, you're not believing in vain. Go ahead and read. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. And see, we're doing the same thing. We can only deliver what we have received by the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's poured out the beginning of this age that we in now, the third age in the realm of time. See, this age began with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and it's still going on all the way down to the end of the age. But the end of this age ends with the revelation of Yahshua Messiah. That's what he's doing. He's revealing himself to his sons. Okay, go ahead. How the Messiah died for our sins. He died for our sins. There's your death principle. And how did he do it? According to the scripture. He said, according to the scripture, we give her a read Isaiah 8 20. He said he died. According to the scripture, he said, just didn't come down here in the Baptist church that I came up in. I said, okay. They said, well, Jesus died for our sins. I said, he died for our sins. What that meant. What that meant. You see what I'm saying? But we're reading here how he did it. He did it according to the scripture. So he died according to the scriptures. Read. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. And he rose again the third day. So he did it before. But this is the class and we only got two hours to talk about stuff. We can't get everything out. You know, but just keep coming. Just keep, you know, coming to study and with us. See, because all of these things will be brought out. So he died and he buried and he rose again. Uh-huh. According to the scriptures. See, he did it all according to the scriptures. Okay, so now we need to know well, what are the scriptures. Sure. Let's read Isaiah 8 and 20. 8 and 20, Isaiah, mm -hmm. to the law and to the testimony. It said to the law, which is the first five books of the Bible. We came down here, we had to be taught correctly. See, because we thought the scriptures, I know I thought the scriptures was the Bible. But we're finding it out, and it's in your book, and this organization did not put it in there. It says to the law, we found out that that law is the first five books of the Bible. Read. Into the testimony. Into the testimony. Or the, the uh, love and the prophecy. We found out that that is the next 34 books of the Bible. 39 books in all, which is commonly called the Old Testament. See, it said to the law and to the testimony. Read. If they speak not according to this word. And we come down here and we found out that the word is Yahweh. The word and the Holy Spirit. The word is Yahweh. So it says. If they speak, if they say, if they speak, what does it say again? If, if they speak not according to this word. You got the book of Jeremiah, the word of Yahweh came unto me saying. You got the book of uh, Obadiah, the word of Yahweh came unto me saying. You got the book of Isaiah, the word of Yahweh came unto me saying. What you mean the word of Yahweh? You hear the word of Yahweh is a picture illustration. To us to glean the spiritual reality of see it said if they speak not it didn't say it. if they speak not according to these words you sure you read that right read it again if they speak <laughs> not according to this word that would be these words it's a lot of words. It says, if they speak not according to this word singular singular why does it say that because it's testifying to Yahshua the Messiah. See what I'm saying? The word of Yahweh. See, Yahweh Elohim. See, he's the one that appeared unto all the prophets and told them what, uh, showed them visions and told them what to write. Get that scripture uh, where it says all scriptures are given. Um, yes. Is it in Peter or something? Wherever it is, y'all know where it is. But go ahead and continue to read there, uh, Baron. It is because there is no light in them. Now, it says that they speak, if they speak not according to this word, not these words, but this word, is because there's no light. When we come up here and we find out that light is synonymous with understanding. So if there's no light in them, 
See, and the only way you're going to have that in you is that the Holy Spirit takes up resonance in your heart and in your mind. See, that we can't take no credit for none of this. See, it's Yahshua the Messiah, see, that is revealing the Father. You see what I'm saying? That was maybe known as Yahweh. See, Yahshua the Messiah is the one that's revealing the Father to us. See, we're not revealing to each other. You have vessels up here. But the vessels up here, if the Holy Spirit is in the vessel, they're going to give homage and praise and glory and uh, teach and preach about Yahshua the Messiah. You see what I'm saying? How all these things is leading up to him. See, go ahead. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by the instrument. Why are you reading that? Also, give me that scripture that says, Great is the mystery of holiness. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh. Get that one too, but stop that over, uh, Doctor uh, Taylor. All Scripture is now. You just read what the Scriptures are. It says to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. And we come up here and find out that the law and the testimony is the first thirty-nine books of the Bible commonly called the Old Testament. So what we're reading here is uh, pairing right along with this. Stop that over. All Scripture is given. By the inspiration of Yahweh. See, all scriptures. Don't say well, some of the scriptures. It don't say that. It say all scriptures given by the inspiration of Yahweh. See, they're given by the inspiration of Yahweh. See, folks say, well, man can't. You know, they just went in there and they just that messed that book up. You know, they, uh, you know, it's not that the book is messed up. It's the people's interpretations. All these different belief systems in the world. The people's interpretations that's messed up. The book in and of itself. Now, there are mistakes in there, but this vision that Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly had, it corrects those mistakes. It corrects those mistakes, you see. Go ahead. And it's profitable. See, now this is the scripture that's given by the inspiration of Yahweh. It's profitable. Read. For doctrine. For doctrine. For reproof. You can prove it, and then you can reprove it again. Isn't this soon? Well, okay, yep, it's proven. <laughs> okay, you know, we research and then we research again. You see what I'm saying? So it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for reproof, prove it, and then prove it again. You see what I'm saying? This thing, I'm going to tell you, this thing cannot be exhausted. You know, we think, oh, well, you know, yeah, I get it. I see it now. I understand. See, it can never be exhausted. That's why we're told that we're going to be learning in the ages to come. Because this thing can't be exhausted. Go ahead. For correction. See, for correction. See, we're, we're getting corrected. See, all the things that we thought we knew about our creator. You know, coming in this school, we are, we are corrected. See, show the right way. See, because Yahweh himself gave our father at the very last moments in this uh, probationary period of time. See, he gave him a divine vision of revelation straight from the creator himself. See, straight from the creator himself. And see, not only did he give him a divine vision of revelation, he told him to make me prove it until you are satisfied. See, because the, the, the father knows uh, ain't going to do you no good. Your dean knowing ain't going to do you no good. You know, any of the, any of the people to get up here and, uh, you know, uh, speak of this great doctrine, them God ain't going to do you no good. You've got to know for yourself. I know in the world, we're dependent on our rabbi. we depended on our minister to know. We're dependent on, you know, the, the, uh, the rabbi, the minister, the priest. You know, we're dependent on them to know. You see what I'm saying? But every child got to sit on his own bottom. You got to know because you came here by yourself and you leaving by yourself. Your mama ain't going with you. Your husband ain't going with you. Your kids ain't going with you. Each and every one of us, we came here alone and we're leaving alone. You see what I'm saying? So we have to know this thing for ourselves. And he gave us such a great cloud of witnesses. Get that scripture too. He's given us such a great cloud of witnesses. We, we, we don't have to do nothing. It's almost like, come on in here, girl. You hungry? You hungry? Come on in here, girl. Sit down and eat whatever you want to eat. It's right there. You ain't got to cook nothing. You see what I'm saying? This gospel is the same way. You come in this class, everything is set out before you. Right. All you got to do is come, sit down. He said, learn of me. And that's what we got to do. Yes. We got it so easy on this side of the cross. Easy peasy on this side of the cross. 
Okay, go ahead. Was that all there? For instruction and in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness. Now, in the flesh, it says no righteousness in the flesh. No, not one. All has fallen short of the glory of Yahweh. But we're talking about his righteousness. The step of a righteous man. There's seven steps in this tabernacle pattern. It says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by Yahweh. And here you go thinking, well, you know, it says the steps of a righteous man is ordered by Yahweh. So I'm going to be righteous and do the step. I'm stepping in the uh, step to Jesus. You see what I'm saying? You know, I don't know you, that's what we do. Right. <laughs> that righteous man, that righteous man is Joshua the Messiah. Okay, go ahead. That the man of Yahweh. Joshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. I don't need to say that because it's just blowing me away. One day it's like, oh, remember. <laughs> You know, it says so the um, man of Yahweh, which is Yahshua Messiah, read, may be perfect. May be perfect. And you ain't perfect. I ain't perfect either. But that man of Yahweh, he perfect. Okay? He perfect. Go ahead. Thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Oh, thoroughly furnished, baby. These are um, vessels in your tabernacle, baby. Okay, thoroughly furnished. We can look at each one of these vessels. And we know that it's our point to Yahshua Messiah. And the previous speaker went into that. We already talked about the court around the bottom. Now, when you get in this holy place, you got that uh, seven brass golden candlestick. They lit this at three o'clock in the afternoon and they snuffed it out at nine in the morning. It was always light in here. Remember, the high priest, he had to be anointed, which is a type of spirit that a couple of holy anointing oil. See, that's the type of spirit covered from the tip of his head to his feet. Every part of him had to be covered. That pointed to a type of seal. And Yahshua said, I am the door, okay? So when you go in here, see, it's constant light in here. You can see clearly now. You're not in darkness no more. You see what I'm saying? Because the S-U-N lit it up in here when this was snuffed out at nine in the morning. And he was talking about this table of shoe bread. They had 12 loads of bread on here, four corners. You see what I'm saying? He beautifully brought it out to show you how it's pointing up to your seven branch eight order and pointing up to your heart. You see what I'm saying? But spiritually, psychologically, see, this uh, uh, table shoe bread, because remember the high priest had to eat off of this day. Remember that? Well, what is that point of two? Point of communication. See, you have constant communication with your creator. You ain't never not in communication with him, see, because you're sealed and you're in the holy place now. Remember, says the stand in the holy place? So you're in the holy place now. And then you got this uh, altar of... Uh, uh, hmm. Uh, offer of incense, yeah. So see, the, and he was talking about that sweet smelling savor, offering up that proper, the proper, um, uh, well, offering up the, uh, you know, whatever the, the uh, ingredients. Yeah, the ingredients. Thank you. Ooh, child, you know, sometimes I'm getting old, and you know, sometimes you can see your moments. So now, the proper ingredients, see, of this incense, see, was a sweet smelling savor unto the nostrils of Yahweh. You see what I'm saying? So this is pointing up to the intercession. See, and it says there's one mediator between Yahweh and man. That's the man, Yahshua the side. So see, when you in here, see, you're in constant light. You got your mediator, which is in you, and you're in constant communication. You see what I'm saying? So go ahead and continue to read there. Was that it to that one? Yes, and we're holding Hebrews and First Timothy. Okay, uh, I think I want, uh, I guess, First Timothy, read that first. See, and then here, see, remember that uh, veil of the temple, it was written twain. See, that uh, second veil pointed to the veil of the flesh, see. So now you're able to sit in heavenly places. Now you're able to see who's sitting on your throne, see. And this is a three-in-one configuration. Not only are you able to see who's sitting on your throne, you find out that, wow, Yahweh Elohim Yahshua, Lord God and Jesus Christ, these three are indeed one. Okay, go ahead. First Timothy 3.16. Mm -hmm. And without controversy. See, ain't no controversy. Ain't no debate. It says without controversy. Let's look up the word controversy. This is cool. It says without controversy. Go ahead and read. Great is the mystery of holiness. See, this is a great mystery. Go ahead and get Colossians. Is Colossians where talking about even the mystery? Is that in Colossians? Wherever that is, get that. That says great is the mystery. Mm -hmm. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh. See, Yahweh, the one that in the uh, moderation talks about the ultimate source, substance, 
limiting bounds, pure spirit, Yahweh. Now listen, y'all. Yahweh will what? Manifest in the flesh. Yahweh, the ultimate source, substance, limiting bounds of everything, pure spirit, Yahweh himself. We got to understand what that means. Yahweh himself was manifested in the flesh. Read. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. See, because when he was walking around on the earth plane for those 33 and a half years, he said, I'm doing the work of my father. He said, I am doing. He wasn't talking about, he wasn't trying to puff himself up and say, see, y'all better believe in me. He was talking about his father. You see what I'm saying? He said, believe on the one that Yahweh has sent. You see what I'm saying? See, justified in spirit. Read. Scene of angels. Scene of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Preached unto the Gentiles. We know that uh, the Jews received the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, on the day of Pentecost. And then seven years later, you know, in Cornelius' house, see, the Holy Spirit poured out on the Gentiles. Read. Believed on in the world. Believed on in the world. And then it said that Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So now, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, now he can be believed on in the world. Read. Received up into glory. Received up in glory. Because remember when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, give me the glory that I once had with you before the world was. And then remember, he carried on the other plane for 40 days. You see what I'm saying? And then he was, uh, you know, uh, resurrected in heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father. Man, I tell you, this thing is beautiful, man. This thing is so beautiful. And Yahshua Messiah, the Holy Spirit, is the one that's putting this thing together for us. Okay? That's what we got to realize. It's the Holy Spirit that's putting this thing together for us. It's beautiful. Okay, did I have anything else here? Um, we have a controversy from the Marion Webster Dictionary, mm -hmm. and I believe Cloud of Witnesses. Yeah, and get the uh, uh, Colossians also. Well, I guess it's collection where it's the mystery. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But read that first, what you got there, uh, Dr. Taylor. Okay. This is controversy from the Merriam Webster online. See, it, 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 it ain't no controversy. It says we're all controversy. So we read what the definition of controversy is. Go ahead. A discussion marked especially by the expression of opposing views. See, opposing views. I'm going to tell you, if the Holy Spirit is in the heart and mind of an individual, no opposing views. No controversy. You see what I'm saying? Ain't no opposing views. Now, when you get with, in the Christian world, we all come together. They got their own concept, their own idea how God is. You see what I'm saying? There, there'll be controversies there, but in the body of Yahshua Messiah, it's no controversy. Go ahead. Dispute. Dispute. We ain't dispute. I'm like, well, John, I don't think that's right. You see what I'm saying? Well, what you mean, Sequina? I don't believe that. Disputing, read, quarrel, quarrel. We ain't fighting. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now, we are fighting against principalities and powers in high places. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But in the body of Yahshua Messiah, we ain't fighting. You see what I'm saying? We ain't quarreling with each other. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about the Holy Spirit has taken up residence to heart and mind. We ain't quarreling. Go ahead. Strife, strife. Mm -mm, ain't no strife. We ain't struggling, trying to bang, bang. See, well, let me go get my astrology chart done. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go get my numerology chart done. Oh, wait a minute. What? What? Crystal? Tea leaves? Okay, let me go get some tea leaves with some leaves and see if that'll do it. You see what I'm saying? We ain't struggling. You know, Yahshua said, come unto me, I'll give the labor and have the labor, and I will give you rest. Rest unto your soul. He has given us rest. The gospel of the kingdom, the death, the burial and resurrection, the blood, the water, the spirit principle, it has given us rest. It has given us rest unto our soul. Okay. You know, Do you want some synonyms? Okay, you can. Uh, altercation. Altercation. We ain't, they, they ain't have. Okay, read. Uh, argument. Argument. We ain't arguing about this thing. Uh -huh. Battle. Battle. Doing? See, it says without controversy, without any of these things. See, with God, we're Yahshua side, we ain't got to do that. Because he the one that's teaching his own, you know, he's witnessing, you know, we're witness to what he has already given us. See, it's already been laid out for us. Don't we call these greats? 
And remember what I said earlier, baby, come on in. You hungry? Come on in, child. Sit down and get you something to eat. You know how to, you know how you go to your grandma's house, your auntie house. Baby, come on here. Come on here. You, you, we got food plates. Sit down. It's a feast. This is a feast. We don't have to, to fix nothing. We don't have to do nothing but just learn of him. That's how it's already set up. It's already laid out for us. Folks say, well, look, Dr. Kelly, I want to have the vision you have. Here you go. Here you go. It's the same thing. Oh, I'm telling you, this thing is just so beautiful. Okay. What else? That you want more? Oh, that's good. That's good. Do I have anything else? Yes. Colossians 1 and 26. Okay. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages. It see, it says the mystery mm -hmm. that has been hid from ages. Now, we know that there's three ages in the round of time. So it has been hid the antediluvian age. It was hid in the post diluvian age. Isn't that ages? Come on, baby. Okay, we're going to put that together. Isn't this ages? It says it's been here from ages. Read. And from generations. Generations. All the way down to Yahshua came in. We know that Yahshua, according to this vision of Revelation, he's the 63rd generation for Adam. So from 62 generations on up, it was here. From generations. Ain't that generations? 62 generations. Here from ages and generations. Read. But now is made manifest through his son. It said, but now, see, because we in the present kingdom age, after the Holy Spirit is poured out, see. But now, and what we're reading is at the beginning of the same age. Is that correct, Dr. Taylor? Yes. Okay. But it said, but now, see, in the age we're in now, that thing, that great mystery has been hid from ages and from generations. But now it's made manifest. To who? His sons. Okay. It didn't say now it made manifest. It says now it made manifest to his sons. See, that's the whole world ain't gonna get this thing. It made manifest to his sons. And everybody's supposed to see it probably would say now it's made manifest. Mm -hmm. But it don't say that. It said now it's made manifest. See, in this age, we in the last age in the realm of time where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit has occurred. Now is made manifest to his sons. Read to whom Yahweh would make known. See, here we go again because we really want right. Read Romans 1 19 20. The Yahweh is showing it unto them. Here is not changing the story. It says that Yahweh has made it known. Read that last part again. To whom Yahweh would make known. See, Yahweh the one through his son Yahshua Messiah. Yahweh is making this thing known. Read what is the riches? What is the riches, baby? We rich. Well, what you mean you rich? You can't hardly pay your car note. Your mortgage is due. You ain't got enough money to pay your mortgage. What you mean you rich? You say here. Yeah. I remember that day you were talking before. I was leaving work one day. And I was just oh, I'm just getting on the train. I'm bad. I'm so good. Oh, I'm going to pay this. I'm going to pay that. You know, just, you know, you know how we do. And then y'all sort of wrong with him. He said, but you rich. You know what because I know, I know him as he really is and actually exists. And we read that eternal life is to know. If you know, you have eternal life. Beginning the first thing in the school for up you five. And no. So if you know, you have eternal life. And these are the riches. And all of these things that we're learning are the precious jewels. You see what I'm saying? So read that last part again and continue. Okay. To whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches. See, Yahweh's making known what is the riches. Read. Of the glory of this mystery. Of the glory of this mystery. Among read. the nations. Among the nations. Read. Which is the Messiah in you. See, Joshua the Messiah in you. See, that Holy Spirit of the Holy Spirit taking up residence in your heart and mind. See him in you. Read. The only hope of glory. That's your only hope of glory. See, that's the only way you're going to get out here alive. That's typified right here at the Red Sea. See, you see what I'm saying? The children of Israel, you know, they cross this Red Sea. You know, the may, Yahweh made a way out of nowhere. Here come uh, uh, Pharaoh's army. Hot, hot pursuit. 
You see what I'm saying? And they got over here in Canaan's land. You know, now uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Egyptians, they got over here too, too, but they got over here, they was good. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, because them bodies, some of them bodies washed up on the shore. You see what I'm saying? See, they was dead. So we all going to get over into the next age, which is not the physical. We all going to get over. But see, you want to get over a lot. You don't want to get over and I'm not telling you this like you don't know. It was always good. This is a school of research. We search it and we search it again. Get in your Elohim book and read the full volume about the condensed explanation of hell. Baby, baby, baby. I'm telling you, the whole thing is laid out. What's going to happen? You see what I'm saying? It's laid out. See, you want to get over. Canaan's man is like unto when they got in this wilderness. See, that's like unto the holy place. You see what I'm saying? So you want to get over a line of people want to be getting over, but they not close the kingdom. See, the Holy Spirit is our clothing. You see what I'm saying? It's going to get us over a line. Okay, any more? Yes. Whom we preach, mm -hmm. to warning every man. See, and that's what, what, what strong admonishing. See, in the last critical seconds of time, strong admonishing. You know, the preaching this gospel, see, admonishing every man. Go ahead. And teaching every man in all wisdom, yep. that we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. Yep. Perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. The perfect not, don't mean flesh and blood is perfect. You gotta get that clear. See, it ain't flesh and blood is perfect. See, because you're gonna find something wrong with yourself as long as you're on the earth plane. See, but that perfect is that Holy Spirit in you. See, that's the thing that's perfect. Okay. Any do I have anything else? Did I hear the bell? Cloud of witnesses. Yes. I did. Okay, okay. Yes, read that, and then I'll sit down. Hebrews 12 and 1. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of See, witnesses. Look, and remember, it says in the uh, moderation that Yahweh depicted himself as a cloud. You see what I'm saying? You got a cloud around this church. You got a cloud around this church. You got a cloud around this church. So great a cloud of witnesses. Read. Let us lay aside every weight. See, lay aside that weight. You know, trying to find God, making God pop him up God you want him to be. You see, lay that weight aside. Read. And the sin which does so easily. And that sin which so easily beset us. It's an effort to get here. Every time class, we have class. It's an effort. You see what I'm saying? That old boy, ain't you tired? You tap when you go out of town, you can miss one town, it ain't gonna be no big deal. You see what I'm saying? Just anything trying to make you not come one more time to learn about your creator as he really is and actually is this. Go ahead. Looking on which so easily beset us, right. and let us run with patience the race that is set. See, run the pain the cross. See, be patient. You see what I'm saying? If you don't see it with Adam, you might see it with Noah. If you don't see it with Noah, you might see it with Abraham. If you don't see it with Abraham, you might see it with Moses and children of Israel. You see what I'm saying? Just run that race with patience. Read. Looking unto Yahshua. That's who we got to look unto. Yahshua. Read. The author. Huh. And finisher. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? The way you had it, well, decided. Uh-uh. It said Yahshua. Is the author yes. and the finisher. See, he's the one that's the right and he's the one that's the finisher. So, what you trying to do? Well, I think, you know, I know. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm very smart. So, I know. One, it says that he's the author. Y'all should sign the author, uh huh. And finisher of our faith. He's the author. Okay. And the finisher of our faith. Man, that should, that should make us, that, that truly rest. We ain't got a struggle with rest. Okay. So I'm a, I have my seat. I hope you got something out of it. And all praise, honor, and glory go to our Savior, Yashin Messiah. Oh, Thank you, Dr. May Cohen and all the vessels that came forth this afternoon. That would end our class for this e afternoon session. Um, I just have a few announcements. We meet here publicly at the Best Western Plus Hotel in Hillside, Illinois, 4400 Frontage Road on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. and Monday and uh, 
Mondays and Thursday nights. We are on Zoom and YouTube from 7.30 to 9.30. Twice a month on the Thursday, we do meet in person here at the hotel from 7.30 to 9.30. And our next in-person class will be on April the 6th in person here at the hotel. Thursday class. Thursday class. Thursday class. Um, we also have choir rehearsal after class. So maybe please stand for doxology, which is taken from the last two. And we would like to thank all visitors for coming to visit with us today. We thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, the Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and ever. Let the class say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Um, Thank you. Thank you.